please welcome, welcome. I'm going to be talking about Instagram hashtags and what on earth is going on with the recent change. Um, because hashtags are essentially, well, they're not really going, but I'm going to explain what has happened to them. Um, Instagram has come out and dropped a bit of a bombshell. It's going to adjust you there. Now I'm, uh, I can't see your comments there just because I'm doing this from the phone in the way. Oh no, I can, sorry. If you've got any questions, make sure you drop them below. And of course, if you're watching it live, drop live. Let's get my hair, my matted hair there out of the way. If you're, if you're watching it live, let us know live. And of course, if you're watching the replay, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you do subscribe, follow, whatever platform you're watching this on actually. Okay. I don't know if you can see that there, guys. Sorry. So hashtags on Instagram, what the hell is going on? Okay, so someone from Instagram, I think it may have been the CEO. I I was just too enthralled with what he was saying to remember, you know, who it was. Has come out and said, don't bother using a ton of hashtags on Instagram anymore because they are not going to do an absolute thing to help you increase views. Now, historically, they always have. Instagram has been a platform where... Um, you've been able to gain extra views and a lot of engagement based on your hashtag. Um, one of my, uh, who's now become, a, she's connection, but she's now become a really good friend, Sarah Small Scott, is the hashtag uh, queen with this and will we'll actually sit down and structure her ha hashtags in a way that she would get 70, 80, 100,000 views from her hashtags alone. And the strategy was was phenomenal. So I'm quite interested, I should do a live with her actually, quite interested to hear her thoughts on this. So they've come out and said this. Now, what does that mean? Obviously, you don't need to go and put 20, 30, which I wouldn't have recommended anyway, um, you know, on your Instagram post. But here's something that you do need to consider. Hashtags serve other purposes. Okay, yeah, we, we know that they group things and that you become searchable on the platform. But have you considered that hashtags, well, it's not necessarily it's a hashtag, but the word that you use in the hashtag becomes searchable on Google. So I'll give you an example. I've recently jumped on board Twitter. I don't love the platform. I don't love the person that owns the platform, but I've jumped on it for SEO. I really don't care about growing my audience on there. I'm purely using it for SEO. Now, there's a town nearby where I live, which is quite big, so it's a quite a similar size to where I live. And I really want to tap into the market there with my uh, social media business. So I started, I thought I'll play around with this, and I started using the hashtag and the name of that town on my Twitter post. And within a couple of weeks, I was indexing on Google. Now that's really quick. That doesn't always happen that quick. Google, Google can take three to six months sometimes for you to start ranking. Uh, when I say ranking, you start being um, included in search appearances uh, when someone's searching for something. So in this term, um, I was, because I'd posted about social media within the post and I used that, that location in the hashtag, that hashtag actually came up in a search when I typed in social media and the town location. I came up and I was like, what? Within a couple of weeks, yeah. Um, so, and that, and that just shows to me, it doesn't necessarily mean that I was the best with that post or that that post got a phenomenal amount of reach. What it actually means is that no one else was on Twitter using, you know, it for building their social media business and using that town. So that's how you get ahead. That's how I get my clients ahead. That's how I get my own business ahead as well. I may not have the biggest amount of followers, um, but I don't care because I'm getting seen and I don't need to do any advertising because people come to me. So there's no paid advertising going on. It is completely all organic, which is what I do in my work. So that's the reason why I, I would suggest that you still use them. But you want to use carefully constructed hashtags. And what I mean by that is... Okay, so I have a client that's a pest control company and they're in Bendigo, Victoria. And I can't remember the hashtag we've been using. We use it on every single post on Instagram. I don't know if it's pest control Bendigo, Bendigo pest control, I don't know, whatever it is. So we use a number of different hashtags like um, Bendigo Builders because builders often are quite big on using their services for, 
you know, termite, um, like pre-treatments and all that sort of thing. So they want to attract builders, for example. So, you know, Bendigo Builders. Um, and we're now ranking, or well, that account, it's not we because it's not my business, but we've now ranked them for that search term. So when someone types in, you know, whatever, I can't even remember what it is now without looking at it, they're coming up, which means they're going to be searchable on Google for that. Because don't forget, yes, yes, social media is social media. We know that. But it's also a search engine now. So a search engine is anything that you can use to help you um, get seen on Google or in search terms. So you've got to really, really think about that. Use SEO in your hashtags is fine or in your uh, posts. You can't always use it in your posts because sometimes it just doesn't make sense. I've got in the notes section of my phone some keywords and key phrases. If you don't have a keyword report, let me know. We can do that at a really reasonable price. You tell us your website or um, the audience that you're wanting to attract and uh, the demographic, and we'll get, get you all your keywords and your key phrases. Key phrases are really important. That's a couple of keywords together. So instead of just uh, the keyword, say fitness, you might do a key phrase, fitness for over 40 women. So that's a key phrase and it's more powerful than a keyword sometimes. Um, <laughs> sometimes it also it also I'm just getting off the subject here it's also more um, when you niche down your keywords more as well what actually happens is it so okay so when you niche down so we'll take that example of fitness and fitness for over women in their 40s for example right fitness is a very big niche fitness for what toddlers elderly people with terminal illness, like what kind of fitness is it? But fitness for women over 40 is very specific. So the person typing that in would be a woman, a woman over 40, whereas someone who's typed in the word fitness could be anyone and it may not even be related to your niche. Now, the word fitness would be a highly searched term. So you'd think, oh, wow, 6 million, I'm just making up these figures, 6 million people have searched for this term. Great. I've got more chance of getting seen. No, no, because you're fighting against more people. But a term that is more niche, like women over 40, um, fitness or whatever, it's less search. You might only have 20,000 people searching for it, but they're the right audience. So that's what you need to do on your social media. So in, I was going to say, in the notes section of my phone, I've got some key phrases on there that I add on to every um, po <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't say every post because I don't, but I'm doing it on TikTok and some um, Twitter at the moment and Pinterest as well I'm doing it on. And it's just affordable social media marketing and I list the towns that I'm really trying to focus on. And that that's just a little extra thing. I, I do it away from the bulk of the text. So I, you know, push the, push the text down so you can't, you don't really notice it. And I put it down at the bottom so that I'm then searchable for that term. It's in my post. So what will start to happen is people will then start to, um, you know, Google that. Okay, who's affordable, you know, social media in this town, this town, whatever. And I will start to rank. I'm not ranking in a lot of the locations at the moment, but I should within the next three months at least have, you know, when I do Google where I am sort of promoting um, where I work, where I want to take, you know, um, and I'm talking about my, my business to business um, connections here, not, not so much my other businesses with like my digital download store and all that sort of thing. This is more just my done for you social media. Um, you know, I'm starting to appear there. It can take a while though. It can take three to six months and then you may only appear for one, one term. Photos are also searchable. So on, you know, if we're talking about Instagram here, there is, uh, when you upload, uh, I can't talk tonight, when you upload a photo and um, you put it onto Instagram and you can also do this by editing a photo as well, you can add an alt tag, an ALT tag. And what that means is you're naming that photo and you don't want to name the photo Melissa's Instagram post. You want to name it what people are searching because photos are searchable, videos are searchable now. So you want to name that piece of work, photo, whatever it is, whether it's on your website, your social media, if, if you've got the option of an alt tag, and you can do this on LinkedIn, you can do this on Instagram, and you can do this on uh, Facebook pages, I believe, when you, 
add the photo, there's a couple of new options for alt tag, but I haven't seen it pop up all the time. So I think it's a fairly new feature. And sometimes new features on Facebook do pop in and out and then they're there and then they're not. So it should come back. Um, you can do this on websites, blog, blog photos, you know, if you're blogging or whatever, make sure you do because it means that that's searchable as well. So going back to Instagram, add your alt tags, still use a couple of carefully constructed hashtags. And also too, you don't know what's going to happen in the future with hashtags. All of a sudden you're like, I haven't been using them and now it's the biggest thing and I've got to start again. It's not going to hurt to use them. I mean, don't rely on them for your views, but it's not going to hurt to use them. I'm still going to use them. I'm still going to use, you know, four, three to five of carefully constructed hashtags that I want um, to be, you know, that I want to appear in searches for. The other thing that I think will happen, and look, I don't know, I could be completely wrong. If ever, if if a lot of people do, hey Susie, how are you? If a, we're talking about Instagram, Susan, um, because Instagram have come out and said that hashtags don't bother with them. And it's not going to increase your views, but I'm saying to still use them because uh, Instagram posts, as with all social media posts, are, um, uh, what are they, uh, list, uh, indexed on Google. So if you're going to use the term, you can get found on Google for it. So I would, I would definitely still use that. So any images that you upload, make sure you use the alt tab, tag function on Instagram to help get your image be seen. Use SEO in your video posts and, of course, in your regular posts. And I would, like I said, I'd still use three to five hashtags. That's what I was going to say. If everyone, oh, I shouldn't say everyone, but, you know, if people stop using hashtags, then the searchability is it's going to be quite low, you know, like you've probably got a good chance of getting seen, although a lot of people probably have the same idea. So, for example, if everyone, you know, if 70% of Instagram stop using hashtags, you've got more chance of being seen for your hashtag that you use if 70% of other people perhaps aren't using that hashtag or, you know, it, I, I don't know, I just made up the, the figure of 70%. That's probably not accurate, but it's it's one of those things. None of us really know how it's going to go. I would still use hashtags even though Instagram said it's not going to increase your views, I would use them for the Google factor and for the SEO factor, um, or at least put in, sorry, just get rid of that message here, at least put in SEO in your copy for your text. Um, this uh, won't apply to copy on photos. You can name a photo, yes, that counts, but when you write it on the actual photo, no, that's not going to, it's not going to pick that up as SEO. Put it in your post, put it some SEO key words and phrases, if you don't have an SEO report for your niche and your demographic and who you're trying to market to, let me know because we do do that. It's a really quick and easy and affordable report. Um, and I'd probably recommend to do probably two of them a year. That's it. Two of them a year. Do it every six months and you should be fine. Um, particularly after six months, you'll get a really good indication of what you're ranking for on Google organically. And yeah, and then we'll go from there. Okay, guys, uh, that is it from me. Make sure you subscribe, follow wherever you're watching from. And also, I have released an online digital store where you can get um, DI, DIY marketing for your small business. Now, this is not to take away what we do in our business, done for you marketing, which is our high-end packages. Um, we still want you to come and get those, but that is not in everyone's budget. If it's not in your budget and you have a home business or you're a network marketer or affiliate marketer or you know, perhaps you've got a cake business from home and you're not going to go spend thousands of dollars on marketing. Check it out online store on Etsy. Uh, the store is at social media coach as one word. Uh, we are all things digital on Facebook. Uh, that is our business name on Facebook, uh, TikTok uh, and Pinterest. Uh, they're the only accounts I'm going to go on with that. Um, I'm not going to go on Instagram because I don't really like it. <laughs> but um yeah, check out All Things Dig Digital and follow us on there. And, of course, um, yeah, let us know what you think about it. Editable Canva templates. You can buy 100 posts uh, that leave a spot for your photo. Your, you can change the color to your branding, put your logo in, and they're ready to go. So there's, you know, um, real estate market, travel industry, health and fitness, health and wellness, jewelry business, uh, essential oils, um, uh, I think I said re real estate and uh, travel agents. Um, and we've got a heap of ebooks as well for social media 
platforms on how to master LinkedIn and Instagram, how to gain, you know, 100 followers a day and uh, how to monetize your Facebook group and lots of different things on there. So make sure you go check that out on Etsy or wherever you're watching from. There'll be a, a link tree link somewhere. If you click on that and go to digital downloads, um, you will find that store in there. It's pretty cool. I'm pretty pumped about it. It's really fun doing the designs and getting everything out there and uh, everything that's in my head for years it onto paper and out to the world for a really reasonable price. Most of the templates are under $10. You know, there's some items for $3, $5, $8, $10. And then we have some bundles as well that you can purchase too. So make sure you check that out on Etsy. Click that link or at uh, Social Media Coach on Etsy. Until then, we will see you next time. Thank you for stopping by. Hey guys.